Greetings, folks. Got a bit of a blurb for you here about the Toshiba Satellite. This is a Model 325 CDS. This is a little mid-range notebook computer from mid-1998 that originally sold for around $2,000 back then. So not cheap, but not high-end either. They had the Satellite Pro range and the Tekra that were way more expensive. <laughs> Five, six thousand dollars for some of those. But uh, yeah, this is the 325 CDS, and this is one of the cheaper ones of the 320 and 25 range. So the CDS, that stands for Dual Scan Passive Matrix, not an active TFT. The TFT version was the CDT. This is not the TFT one. CDS, that's what this is. So it was a little bit cheaper, but it still had some pretty impressive specs, which is um, why I was happy to have this donated to LGR not too long ago. Yeah, because inside we have, I mean, look at this. It's still got the original stickers and everything. That's another reason I said yes. I'm like, dude, that's cool, stickers. Um, but yeah, well, let's look at these, you know, specs. Mid-1998, it's pretty awesome. 233 megahertz Pentium 1 MMX, 32 megs of RAM, expandable up to 160. Enormous 4.1 billion byte hard disk drive. Oh man, lightning fast 20 speed max CD-ROM. Ooh, long lasting lithium ion battery, not anymore. All in one CD-ROM disk, uh, nah, 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 hard drives, a 12.1 inch dual scan display and a Zircon 56K flex PC card modem. Modem is no longer in here, I don't think. Um, but it does have the CD-ROM, the floppy disk drive and PCMCIA, which that has been replaced. It's Ethernet. Yeah, a little 10100 Ethernet card. Eh. Useless to me here because I don't have the little dongle that comes out right there and actually provides an Ethernet slot or, you know, port. Uh, whatever. We'll leave it on there. That's what it came with, which would have been uh, pretty awesome at the time if you had something to use it. Yeah, look at that. Got sound over here, a little volume wheel. This has a Sound Blaster Pro compatible thing inside there, some kind of a chipset, and an actual OPL3, as far as I can tell. So that's nice, actual like ad lib compatible FM sound. And a little power slot right here. Look at that, it slides. That doesn't turn on the power, so you reveal the button. Oh, I guess it's got battery life. I did try turning this on earlier today, and it and turned on with the AC adapter, but, uh... Huh. Didn't think the battery would hold a charge. It is. That's interesting. Uh, it originally had Windows 95. Toshiba offered a free Windows 98 upgrade, which is what this appears to have received. Because, yeah, it came out right on the cusp of Windows 98 coming with computers of the time, so... You, they could, like, you could, like, send off for a CD and upgrade to Windows 98. Just OG, no second edition stuff. And uh, yeah, look at this, we got from left to right there, we got VGA, we got parallel, we got serial, we got a little fan, we got infrared, we got USB 1.1, a PS2 keyboard or mouse, and then of course the 15 volt DC in for the AC adapter. It's still loading, I really thought it would have turned off by now. <laughs> How is this thing holding a charge? Okay. Well, whatever. That's cool. What is this? Is this a button? I think that's just broken. No, no, that seems... Oh. Well, anyway. <laughs> How is this running? Ooh, yeah, those speakers are very crunchy. It doesn't sound very good. Um... Wow, I'm totally thrown off by the fact that this battery is holding a charge at all. It was not charging that I could tell when I had the AC adapter on, but maybe it is now? It says 95%. What is this? <laughs> the heck? These, okay, so I'm so surprised because like these batteries like never still have a charge. I've got five other satellites of the 90s. None of them hold a charge. Maybe for like 30 seconds, and then it'll turn off. Wow, that's shocking. Let me see if I can get this uh, lovely 12 point whatever inch display looking half decent on camera. And I guess I'll plug in the AC adapter too, because... Because <laughs> why not? It didn't come with one, I just found uh, an AC adapter that I had that was compatible. 
wow, it's actually doing things. So yeah, look at this. When you move the mouse around, it's <laughs> pretty much disappears. It's not as bad as some of the older passive matrix displays, but it's still not great. Anyway, yeah, let's uh, move the camera around here. Yeah, it's about as good as it gets. Mmm, <laughs> dual scan. Yeah, this would be a lovely little computer. I mean, it is anyway, but it would be so much better if it had the TFT. Kind of makes me wonder if I can grab the display from the CDT and maybe just swap it in here for this. Uh, another reason I might want to do that is because you can see there's a line going through it, and it's just overall kind of meh. A lot of these screens that I've seen are completely screwed, like the uh, the layers are coming apart, or there's lines going through it, or contrast and brightness, or the bulb is just broken, you know, it doesn't go anymore. So they almost always need repair, and this one needs a little bit. That might just be a connection issue inside there, that one little line. Whatever, could be a lot worse, <laughs> that's for sure. But yeah, look at all the things on here. It's still got stuff on here, I'm going to be clearing it out, but you know, all the personal information is taken off of files and such. But it still has the programs and the configuration that it had from uh, whoever owned it last. It's got chips and technology, 65555. I like the fact that all the drivers are on here because this is an original install, so that's cool. I've already backed everything up, by the way. Uh, so that's good. Although, thankfully, you can actually get all the files pretty much still from Toshiba, or, well, I guess it's not it's not Toshiba anymore because they got bought out or whatever. They sold off their computer division recently, but the Dynabook website, yeah, you can still grab all of these, which is nice if you're going to re be uh, restoring it, which I am. Probably. Either that or I'll just clean up this distribution. But, yeah, look at that. OPL3SAX. And maybe the SA3. Acrobat. Bunch of disabled stuff, Jet Admin, so HP printer stuff, and Telesync. That was something that Toshiba put on here. I'm assuming for infrared. I don't know. Got some living books. Arthur's Reading Race. Somebody put that on here. It does make me wonder if maybe this was used <laughs> by, uh, I don't know, just taken home by some family. The person that sent it to me said they found it in an office or at work or whatever. So I don't know if they worked. The dentist place, Soft Dent. This is one of those things. I don't think it's still on here now. It's not really. Scrabble was on here at some point. It's pretty much all been removed. Whatever was on here. I doubt this will work. <laughs> even with all these files. Because from what I can tell, Softdent is one of those programs that either does or it definitely did. I don't know if it still does, but it did require one of those uh, parallel port copy protection dongles plugged in in order to run. Okay. Make sure printer is on. Yeah, the Sentinel is what the little dongle is called. So without that, uh... <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be able to do anything with it. So, that's pretty much it. It's just a neat little computer, and I think it's going to do neat little computer things. Uh, disk drive works, CD-ROM works. Oh, no MIDI files. Well, I guess I'm not going to be listening to any music. Unless there's something on here somewhere else. <laughs> not K-MID, just... Yeah. Huh. What are these? So a bunch of MIDI files. So we got some office clip art <laughs> MIDIs. Man. what's going on with the language thing either because uh, <laughs> it wasn't like that when I started it up earlier. Mm. Yeah, as you can hear, the sounds aren't particularly great or like the, the actually resulting audio output. This is intriguing though. What is this? Huh. 
following websites are available on this CD-ROM. Well... <laughs> yeah, these just appear to be like website backups or like samples of websites, which I've seen before, but not this particular selection. I guess maybe it just came with this version of Windows 98. Because that's what it's uh, coming with here, it seems. Yeah, there's all the CAD files and stuff. Yeah, it's just the Windows 98 setup, so... Let's see if Warner Brothers website opens. Oh, dear. Oh! Whoa. What? Is that the Roadrunner? <laughs> okay. Special preview? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I guess it's just a preview for like the Windows Active Channels or Internet Explorer Active Channels. I never really used those, but I remember them being like advertised back then. Wow, what in the world? <laughs> well, either I have just never noticed this on Windows 98, like a CD-ROM before, or this is something that was on this version. I, I don't know. Either way, I'm highly intrigued because this is like an archive of the websites as they were back then. <laughs> or kind of a special version. Wow. What a blast from the past, man. These sites would have taken forever to get on dial-up. Oh, man. That's wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Dude. It's a shame these speakers sound so garbage. This is really cool. Holy crap. The fact that this all still, I mean, obviously it still works, but you can get things like this on old websites and archives and stuff and archive.org and various sites that have uh, reproduced the internet as it was back then. But the fact that this is all, you know, totally functional in here because it's just on the hard disk is, <laughs> that's, that's great. This music is, oh, it's perfect. Wow. I was going to say, I didn't think there would be a song there. It's just a sound effect. Is it Tom Cruise? It is Tom Cruise. Warner Home Video. Oh my goodness. Dude, these MIDI files are 
quality. Wow. <laughs> what a treasure trove this has turned out to be. Let's see what's in their comics. The Comics Channel, virtual home for your favorite funnies. Indeed. Offline sample. <laughs> Kathy. Okay. Still trying to load something. Hmm. Ah, I got a Sunday, Kathy. Okay. And of course, it's one of the computery ones. Ooh, and dual scan. Oh, man. Yeah. I never used active channels, just never did. And so those things we were just looking at, like the WB website and whatever else, I believe those would show up here, like if you were to subscribe to those channels. If you ever did use active channels though, or subscribe to any of those things that we just saw back then, <laughs> let me know how it worked. I'm curious. Should we run something else? I kind of feel like we should, you know, just because. Not solitaire, I'm just, I'm just thinking for the moment. Ugh. Yeah, let's uh, run something from the little CD-ROM on here because, I mean, I've got a CD-ROM, may as well use it, right? Yeah, look at that lovely little thing. A you know, totally legit copy of Windows 95 here, so. Let me just get something off of there and run that. Welcome videos. And the Good Times, Bad Times song. I don't see Weezer in this one. Maybe it's not in this version of Windows. This is OSR2, so. It doesn't have hover, though. That's the main thing I was wanting to run off of here, so. Let's do that. CD-ROM is trying so hard. 20 speed. <laughs> oh, this screen is not ideal. And neither are these poor speakers. It does make the music sound pretty funky, though. With this sound chip. Yeah. Wow. What a blurry mess. Whoops. <laughs> I can't see a thing. And it's even worse because I'm like above the camera, so I'm looking at it at an angle. Oh. It's all dark. Well, this is unfortunate. But hey, memories, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Oh, it's so bad, this poor screen. Yeah, quit, please. Okay. Well, uh, I guess that is it for uh, this video. <laughs> oh, CDS. Maybe we can find the TFT version at some point. Either way, though, this is a neat machine to have. Uh, if nothing else, I can plug it into an external monitor and get some awesome results. I mean, seriously, 233 megahertz Pentium MX is one of my favorite CPUs just to mess around with for Windows 95. So, that's that. Well, I'll, I'll be doing something with this in the future. Definitely going to be 
cleaning it up, restoring it a little bit in terms of the software. Maybe put 95 back on there. I don't know. I might just keep 98 as it is because it was like an official upgrade from Toshiba and it seems to be running all right. So I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it, clean up all the old uh, programs and files that aren't needed anymore. I don't know, maybe I can do some of those speakers. <laughs> if you have any ideas on that, like why it sounds so crappy, so crunchy, it, it, it sounds worse than it should, that's for sure. <laughs> Let me know. Something's going on there, man. Those cones aren't, aren't happy. Uh, and yeah, in terms of those like active channels, the, the website, the archive, I suppose you can call it, I, I've already made a backup of that, as well as everything else that was on here. I'll go ahead and put the, um, the backup of the websites, though. Uh, a link to that in the video description so you can download it and mess around with it yourself if you'd like. Like I said, maybe it is from uh, Windows 98 installation that I've just never messed with. Maybe because I usually just stick to Windows 98 SE and I don't recall seeing that selection of active channels. Oh man, I'm just looking around my Windows 98 second edition CDs and uh, it's not on here at all. So... Like, it's got some of these, like the, the Microsoft Catalog. I mean, that's cool too, but it's not the active channels and the archives of those websites. Oh, there's awesome MIDI file. This is, this is totally different. Uh, so anyway, uh, whatever the case may be, oh dear. <laughs> I'll put a link to download those in the video description, like I said. And that's it for this little Toshiba. Thank you for watching.